let's start with normal operation. The aircraft uses two similar engine bleed systems. They are operated by two bleed monitoring computers, BMCs. Each BMC receives information about duct pressure and temperature and valve positions within the system. Each bleed valve is pneumatically operated and controlled electrically by its associated BMC. BMC number one controls bleed valve number one on the left side, and BMC number two supplies and controls the bleed valve on the right side from engine number two. Each bleed monitoring system is designed to select the compressor stage from the engine for supplying the air. It normally supplies the from the intermediate pressure uh, output, but if that's insufficient due to, for example, low pressure or low RPM on the engine, well then it will select the higher pressure output in replacement of the intermediate pressure to supply the output. The BMC and the bleed system also regulates the bleed air temperature and regulates the bleed air pressure output. If one BMC fails, the other one takes over most of the monitoring functions, but not the operation of the opposite bleed valve that is independent to the individual BMC. Let's start on the ground with a system as I just showed you right here that has no bleed air. It means engines are not started, APU is not running, and there's no ground connection made to the high pressure ground connection unit. Nothing is supplied with bleed air, no air conditioning, no pressurization for the reservoirs, and no bleed air supplied to the engine starter motors. You will also notice that the bleed valve right there, in APU bleed valve, engine bleed valve, as well as the cross bleed valve and the starter valves, they are all closed in this no bleed scenario. Let's use the APU and start up the engine. When starting the APU, as we covered in the presentation on the APU, we will start the APU with electrical means. Electrical power from the battery or from a ground power unit allows the electrical starter motor on the APU to start up the APU. Once the APU is up and running, we can then use the high pressure air from the load compressor on the, bleed, on the bleed output from the APU to supply the system, and more importantly, to supply our starter motors. It will look like this. My APU is running, and my APU bleed has been turned on, allowing the APU bleed valve here to open. When the APU is supplying the bleed, the cross bleed valve here will also open, allowing the single source to supply all of the consumers up here. Bleed air is also provided into the duct, but not going into the engine, of course, because the bleed valve is closed and because the starter valve here is closed. I will start engine number two first. So using my APU output and initiating the start sequence for my engine, with the engine mode selector set to start and the master switch on, I am then opening this starter valve, allowing the high pressure bleeder that's available to go into the starter motor on this engine and turn the starter motor, which then engages mechanically to the gearbox, which then turns the high pressure shaft inside the engine. When the engine is up and running and supplying its own bleed output, then it has the option of supplying bleed to the other side to start the other engine. Although in normal configurations, we will simply, after the starter motor here has de-energized and the starter valve automatically closed, then the bleed valve here will open, the cross bleed valve will close, 
and the APU can then be used to start the other motor in a similar way from the starter motor on the left side. If we need to start the other engine from the running engine, we call that a cross bleed engine start. This could be necessary if, for example, the APU has failed after the first engine start, or in case we had to do a manual engine start here with an operation from the ground air connection right here to start the engine. If we have to perform a cross bleed engine start, it is a supplementary technique procedure, which we will apply from the FCOM supplementary procedure chapter. And in this case, the APU will not be supplying any bleed air, so we're taking bleed air out from the running engine, and then with the cross bleed valve open, supplying that air into the starter motor on the other engine. This will turn the starter motor, which will turn the high pressure shaft inside the engine, and the engine will then start up. Once both engines have been started, whether it started from APU or cross bleed, the cross bleed valve here will automatically close, isolating the left side and the right side from each other. And the APU bleed right here would have been switched off. And if there was a connection made from the high pressure ground connection, it would also have been switched off. The left side here supplies bleed air out to most of the systems, as you can see. It supplies bleed air to its own left wing anti-icing, to pack number one, to the cargo heating, and to the pressurization of the water tank and hydraulic reservoirs, as well as the fuel inerting system. The right side supplies bleed to its own respective side wing anti-icing and its own pack and to its own pressurization for the reservoirs. But with a cross bleed valve closed, they are not connected to each other. This is normal operation. If we have an engine failure, the bleed source here will close, but then the cross bleed valve here can be operated to supply bleed from the other side to replace it. Note one thing though, in the case of abnormal operation and losing a bleed source, that the APU is connected physically to the left side of a cross bleed valve. That means if the bleed source here, if the engine fails, this APU can supply bleed to this side only, replacing the bleed output from engine number one. But if engine number two, on the other hand, fails, then the only way to get the APU to supply the bleed is to allow the APU to supply all the bleed, as the cross bleed valve here would have to open. And when it operates, it would have to supply this side and the hard connection, because it's on the left side, will automatically supply here. And that will eliminate the output from the bleed source on the left engine, if that was the scenario.